Hi there, everyone. Um, today we are going to be doing this neon text effect. I posted the speed art uh, for it the other day, and it, the speed art actually was meant to be uh, the tutorial, but uh, my mic, I don't know what happened, if it got dropped or, or what, but um, when I tried recording it four different times and the audio it just, it was really, really bad and it was unfixable. And so I had to wait until I got a new mic and I got one now. So um, there's been a couple people that really like that neon text effect. So I'm going to show it. And so this is the main scene of this. And all it consists of is just uh, some text and a light and this plane right here. And that's pretty much it in the camera, of course. And then uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some things in the graph editor. Let me pull that up real quick. Let me click on this text. And I think this is the right file. It should be. Let me go ahead and press in over here. View properties. Hmm. Anyways, just know that we're going to be doing something in the graph editor. I haven't opened this file in a little while, but it should all be there. I'm not seeing it right now, but we are going to, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new startup file. And I have my startup file set up to uh, cycles render now. Um, Blender render, I, I like Blender render for... Um, doing some realistic type deals, but it just, it don't have the uh, CUDA rendering uh, for your graphics card and stuff like that. And it just, it takes longer and stuff. And so, and I'm pretty used to cycles render. I've been using cycles for quite a long time now. So, but the first thing we are going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to start my screencast keys real quick. So you guys could see what I'm doing. So we'll make the text, I don't know, 48, and we'll make this 52, and let's go 64. Make it just a little bit bigger, and I'm going to position this out here so you guys can see everything. So I'm going to press X and delete this cube, and then I'm going to press Shift A, and we're going to go down to text, and I'm going to add the text, and I'm going to press 1 on my number keypad, and press 5 to go into orthographic mode. Then I am going to press R for rotate, and then on the X axis, and then press 9, 0 on my keyboard for 90 degrees, and bring that up there. And then I'm just going to press tab and go into edit mode. And I'm just going to type out GIMP in all capitals. And then tab out back into object mode. And then we are going to go up here to our tabs up here. And I'm going to click on the F. It's for the uh, font. And I'm going to come down here where it says font. And let me go ahead and press in and close that out. And we will go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger. And I'm going to hold down control and then hold in my middle mouse button and go up to make this bigger so you guys can see that a little bit better. I'm going to click on this icon and I'm on Windows so your font files are in Windows and then under fonts and the font that we are going to be using for this is Gotham Ultra and press open font and it's a nice bold thick font and the next thing we are going to do is we're I'm panning with my middle mouse button is we are going to do the extrude value and I'm going to do, uh, let's try 0.2 and see how that looks. And that looks good to me. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to go down to paragraph and we're going to center that text just like that. And let's see, we got that. Yeah, and that should be good. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to press uh, Alt-C, and we're going to change this to Curve for Mesh Text, and then we can tab into Edit Mode, 
and now you see that we have curves here and what we want to do on these curves is I'm going to just click one point on that curve and then I'm going to press L and highlight that whole curve and then I'm going to press P to separate this uh, text curve out of there and just I'm going to go through and do that for all these so L and then P L and then P and then this P we don't have to do that because it's already its own separate one so now if we go back into object mode you'll see that if I press G and grab this that they are their own separate text now and I'm gonna click back on one on my number keypad again and I'm gonna left click I mean sorry right click over here just to move the 3d cursor for now and wherever you have your 3d cursor in your scene is if you add another object that's where the object is going to be added at so we're going to go shift a and we are going to go to curve and then bezier circle and then i'm going to press r x nine zero on my keyboard and then i'm just going to press s for scale and i'm going to scale this way down zoom in here and scale it way down let's try about right there and next we are going to go ahead and click on the bevel object for this and it's going to be bezier circle let's control z that let's go ahead and highlight all these and click on bezier circle okay we got to do it one by one in Bezier circle so now you can see that that's using that circles size to make our curve skinny like that I'm gonna come back up here and click back on that Bezier circle and I'm gonna click back on one and I'm gonna press s for scale and I'm going to bring the thickness up on those just a little bit looking on this G because we don't want this overlapping and just like that I think that will be good and now the next thing that we're gonna do is materials actually no we could press uh, let's press shift C on our keyboard to get our 3d cursor back into the middle there and let's go ahead and press shift a and then add a mesh plane and then let's press s and then X and then let's just scale that out a little bit there and then let's press S Y and scale that out some there and then let's tab into edit mode and then let's click one vertice and then hold down shift and click that next vertice and then let's click three on our keyboard and then let's bring this out to about there and then we're going to press E for extrude and then E for extrude again then E for extrude one more time and then E for extrude and then we're going to press Z to align it on the Z axis and then we're going to press 4 and that should be good there now we're going to tab out of edit mode and go back into object mode and we'll come over here and add a modifier and it's going to be a subdivision surface and we'll do 2 for the resolution and then we'll tab back into edit mode and press Control R to add a loop cut and then with your uh, mouse wheel just scroll it up once and you'll get two of those and then left click once and then press s for scale and then x to constrain it on the x-axis and then let's just scale those out to about there and then we're going to press Control r for another loop cut and we're just going to move that up to about there and then control R for another loop cut there and we're going to bring that to the front to about there just so we can get the shape back then we're going to come over here in our tools tab and do the shading and make it smooth and we're going to press one on our number keypad and we're going to press control alt zero to line our camera up and I'm going to press in and I'm going to click on where's it at lock camera to view then I'm going to hold down shift to pan it around over here. I'm going to zoom in here 
on the text. I'm just gonna move this camera into a position about right there. I'm gonna press Shift F to go into fly mode, and I'm going to use W to uh, zoom in here a little bit on this. Let's kind of look up on the text. And let's go ahead and click on the text and then hold down shift to highlight them all. And then let's grab them along the Z axis and let's pull them up just a tad bit. About right there. That's fine. Let's click back on our backdrop here and let's press S for scale and then X along the X axis. Just so we still see it in our camera view. And then let's go ahead and about right there should be cool. And then I have this window open over here. And how you get another window is you see these little tab down here in the very corner. You just go ahead and grab it and pull it up. And then I'm going to make it the 3D view and I'm going to press zero to look at it through the camera. And it's just less real estate here. And uh, it helps when you're uh, just trying to look at what your render is instead of doing it in a full preview like that. Um, so everything's lined up. So let's go ahead and click on the G and I'll go ahead and make this how your guys look so you guys can see how I go ahead and get them windows. So your guys probably looks like this. And so I'm just going to come to this corner and I'm going to drag it out just like that. And I'm going to make this the node editor. And I'm going to just go ahead and move it up. And we're going to go over to our material tab and we're going to click on new. And we'll just call this glow. Uh, or we'll just name this neon dot one. Just like that. And we're going to come and change this diffuse shader. And we can change this over here under surface and we're going to change this uh, to a emission shader just like that and we can make the color some kind of let's try that bright hot pink type looking color there let's press z on our keyboard and then go into rendered And I like that. So let's go back to solid mode. Let's click over here on our world and let's click on use nodes. And then let's change our background color to black. And now let's check that out. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to our material and let's change the strength to like, let's say 10. Just so we get some nice glowing effects there. Go ahead and click on our backdrop there and let's click new material and let's name this uh, backdrop and we're going to keep it as a diffuse shader but we are going to move the color down not uh, quite black but to a kind of a dark gray that looks good to me now we are going to click on the eye and We'll go ahead and give it the neon dot one, but we're going to go over here and we're going to click this two to make it its own separate material. And we'll go to the M and do the same thing. Click the two to make it its own. And the three. So now we got all our text lit up. And let's go back to, uh, let's click back on our background plane. Oops. And let's mess with this color a little bit more. Just because I want some nice glow on the ground. Just like that. And that looks fine to me. So let's go ahead and the next thing we are going to be doing is we don't need the node editor anymore. So I can go ahead and close that. And the next thing I'm going to come up here and I'm going to open up a new window and we're going to change this to the uh, graph editor. There it is. 
And <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're just going to be animating the strength of the text. So let me press N and T so you guys can see that. Actually, let me press N again and let me change this uh, lock camera to view. Let me turn that off and let me go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the strength and we are going to press I to lock in a keyframe here. And we are going to be doing this on 24 seconds per frame. So I'm just going to do uh, 48 seconds of animation. So I'm going to click on my end and make it 48. And we are going to go all the way. Actually, let's go ahead and let's go back over to our dope sheet and let's press X and delete the keyframe real quick. And let's go back to our graph editor and let's go ahead and put this text on zero, the emission. And let's go ahead and press I there. And then let's go all the way to 48. And let's make this, uh, let's say, actually, let's go to frame. Four and let's make this uh, emission of strength of one. Press enter. Let's press I to put in a keyframe and then let's go all the way to frame 48 and let's make this to a strength of uh, let's try 12. And let's press I and lock in a keyframe there. So now if we scroll through this using our left mouse, see that it's going from light to super dark and you see that we have our graph there. So let's press, oops, A, make sure we're on the G. And let's go ahead and press T and let's change this to linear, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and give me some real estate here because I'm gonna press end here. And I'm gonna click on add modifier and I'm going to add a noise modifier. And we are going to change the phase here. Let's go ahead and change the phase to, let's say about 1.4. And the scale, let's do about two. And the strength, let's do about um, three. And let's go ahead and add another modifier, a limits modifier. And let's click on X minimum and Y minimum. And let's put this to about 0.2. And now if I scroll through this, you'll see that you'll get different strengths in the light. And so it will be blinking on and off in this noise modifier. And you could raise the scale up if you'd want to. But I'm going to keep it about two there and next we are going to be clicking on the eye and we're going to be doing the same thing so we're going to go down to zero and we're going to lock in uh that so we're going to press i and then we're going to go to about i uh, will go back to frame four here and we'll go to one and press i and lock in the keyframe and then we'll go to frame 48 and we'll do a strength of, let's do eight on this one. And let's press I, and then come back over here to our graph editor, press T, linear, add modifier, noise, and let's do the scale, let's do uh, 1.5 for this one. The phase we'll put back to, let's do two, and the strength, uh, let's try 2.5, and Let's go ahead and put a limits on there. Let's do let's go ahead and do minimum right there. And let's go ahead and put this point two also.
And and there we go. So we will have our lights blinking on and off for us. And this, uh, if you want to go ahead and make this look like a real neon sign, um, which this does look like one, but this one's going to be having uh, some real big issues. Um, but we would have to spread, uh, separate the text and, and, uh, and do all that. And I just wanted to show you guys a simple way of uh, achieving this effect. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and press Z down here and go back to solid. And then I'm going to close this window over here now. So I'm going to click up here in this corner. And I'm going to wait until the arrow comes up that's pointing right. And I'm going to move it back to the left and close that out there. And now all we need to do is go to our render tab. And uh, I got mine on the GPU rendering. So if you go up to file, user preferences, and then go into system and come down here and choose CUDA. And if you've got a supported graphics card, it will uh, come up right there. And then you could have GPU compute. Um, for mine, I'm just going to do 1280 by 720 and I'm going to keep it at 50% just to save on render times. And let's see the sampling here. Uh, I got it set on 10 samples. I'll go ahead and move this up to, uh, let's say a hundred and I'm going to keep it low just for tutorial purposes. And let's see here. Performance is fine, and I think that is it. So it is a uh, animation, so we want to change our output. So we we'll want to click on output and click on this icon, and then go to wherever you want to save it. And I will save it here in this folder, and I will name the fo folder uh, Neon, I don't know, 4. And I would just name this Neon 4, just like that. And I'm going to save these out as PNGs, RGBA, color depth, 8-bit. And I'm going to keep the compression 15% uh, just for tutorial purposes. If you guys wanted to do this, um, I'd make it to 90% and I would change this at 16 if I was doing a final um, but for just tutorial purposes, I'm going to leave this here. And then, like I said, on, I would change this for final render. And then down here, I would change my render samples for final render. And I would move this up to something like, I don't know, 1500 or, or more. Just so it's uh, more rendering samples and it will look good. And I think that is it now, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and render this animation out now and i will come back as soon as it's done so i'm just going to hit animation up here to render out the animation so i will be right back after it's finished okay guys i do apologize i am back um there is one thing that i forgot to do so i'm going to move this 1280 to 720 up to 100 percent and i'm going to change the render samples to uh let's say 200 and I'm just going to press F12 real quick to get a full render. And I messed that up again. I'm sorry. I'm going to move this over closer towards the end here to about 33 or something like that. And I'm going to press F12 and I will come back after this render. Okay, guys, I am back. And the reason why I did that, uh, I do apologize because that wasn't the final part. We want to do set up the compositing first before we render out the animation. So that's the reason why I moved the um, uh, timeline up a little bit so I could get it at its uh, most glowing point. And now we're going to click up here and we're going to go to compositing. And I'm going to click on use nodes and backdrop. And then I'm going to press control shift and then left click so we can get that backdrop up there. And then I'm gonna press shift and spacebar to full screen this. And we want to do the compositing first. That's, that way uh, all your effects get rendered with the animation. So let's go ahead and press shift A 
and we are going to add a uh, filter and it is going to be a glare and we're going to put that in there <laughs> and you see that it glares pretty bad but we're going to go to fog glow and we are I'm going to change this to quality high and I'm going to change the threshold to let's say about 0.6 See what that does for us and it gives us more glow and the size I'm going to move down to six seven there we go get more glow out of that and you can test the mix if you'd like to see what that would give you so we'll go point two on mix and we just want a super nice looking glow you know like how neon glows and I think for our purposes let's try threshold 0.7 mm, 0.6 is fine 0.6 and we'll go back to zero on the mix and you could move the size up to eight if you'd like and that just gives it some super big glows and that might be all right. I'll probably leave it like that. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to do shift A and we're going to go back to filter and we're going to add a bokeh blur to this. This is my favorite filter. And we are going to turn down the size to like 0.2. And let's try 0.3. See how that looks and you can turn down the max blur size if you like to 12 let's try 12 and i let's see let's try 0.4 see how that looks i like that let's go back over here to our glare and let's turn this back down to seven No, we'll go back to 8 and we'll turn the threshold down to, let's say, 0.4. To get some more pink glow in there. Mm -hmm. Try 7 again. Just wanted to glow. We'll stick with 8. I just don't want it to be too much glow. And I don't want there to be too much blur in there. But that looks good to me. And that's all we're going to uh, do for this. So now we're going to just plug this into our composite because we want it to composite with our renders and that's it. And now I'm going to go ahead and go back to previous and then I'm going to click up here and then go back to my setup and I'm going to go ahead and put the size back down to 50% and the render samples back down to 100 just for my purposes and tutorial purposes. And now I'm going to go ahead and render out the animation as soon as I go back to frame one. And I will be right. I will be back after this renders out. All right, guys, I am back and it is all fully rendered out. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of here. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to go down to video editing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this up a little bit. I'm going to change this to our file browser and change this to that and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to pull this out and I'm gonna make this our properties just like that and now we come over here and we press shift a and then go to image because we made a image sequence and we'll come over here and we're just gonna hit a to highlight all these and then add image strip and then zoom in on this here. And if I press Alt A, you'll see uh, what we get here. And it's it's being like this because I uh, made it at such a low resolution and I made the uh, glow effects and stuff like that for a higher resolution. Um, but just trust me, that's the way you do it and you will get that glowing um, on and off text. And if you want, we'll press Alt-A and we'll come back to the default. 
and we will open up a new area over here and we'll go back to our graph editor and press in and you can go ahead and go on each number and lower the strength values and stuff like that um, and the phase and then that way you have it coming on and off at different stages a lot slower instead of doing it a lot faster so now you see the graph is more spread out so it will come on and off a lot slower and you will get a better animation from that so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and then go back to the video editing and then um, you want to render this full size and as you can see here um, I had some of them settings set a little bit too high and they're blinking a little bit too much and a lot of that has to do with the resolution I rendered this out as so um, this is how you bring a image sequence in here and then all you want to do is just come over back over here to your properties and you will want to change this to um, whatever it is you want to save this out as a h264 and then come down to encoding and you can save it as AVI or a OGG or QuickTime or uh, totally up to you or H.264 um, I'll do QuickTime real quick and then we'll just go ahead and hit render animation real quick and it goes through it that fast and you'll see that it's that easy um, but like I said, I rendered at a low resolution, so the glow and stuff like that is more uh, pop because of the lower resolution. And it is a little bit too fast of an animation, and that is my fault for not going through it all the way. But like I said, all you need to do if you have that problem is just go back into your graph editor and go through each one and change your scale value and then your strength and you can change the phase too if you'd like on each and every one of these so let's go to the noise and let's change the scale on this one for sure and change the strength and the phase and then let's click on the P and let's do the same thing. Let's change the scale, strength, the phase, just like that. And that way it's more spread out and there's more, uh, there's still up and downs in it, but it will blink on and then down, off, on, down, off, just like that. And you'll want to spread that out more just so you have more of a blinking text effect, just like. Uh, I got on here and I didn't want to do that and you have it blinking on and off just like that and that's all you guys have to do um, if I had more time I would go through it and re-render it out but I don't and I do apologize for that but that is just how you fix that issue and then make sure you, before you render your animation you go back through and you go back into your compositor and you do your compositing first and then render your animation and that should be pretty much it so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please like and subscribe for tons more tutorials and have a great day thank you